Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. Last video, I have completed five short problems on valuation of shares. Now in this video, two short problems, that is sixth and seventh. Then we'll start the main problems on computing the value of shares. So here three main problems I'm going to explain. So before that, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Without problems, you cannot be able to understand the lecture. So always keep ready a hard copy of the problems Then you can understand, you can listen to the lectures. So before starting the sixth problem, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, <clears throat> see the sixth problem, short problem, sixth one. Asserting the yield value of shares of Sudesh Limited, average rate of dividend declared by Sudesh Limited. So our present company is Sudesh Limited. The presently average rate of dividend declared and paid by Sudesh Limited is 20%. Whereas normal rate of dividend declared by companies engaged in similar business is 15%. This is the normal rate of return. Other companies in the same industry, the other companies are earning on an average 15%, but Sudesh Limited is earning 20%. So 20% is the expected rate of dividend, whereas normal rate of dividend is 15%. Paid up value of each share is 10 rupees. So everything is given. So we can easily calculate the yield value of share by using the formula. Yield value is equal to expected rate of dividend divided by normal rate of dividend into paid up value per share. So here you can see yield value per share. Expected rate of dividend divided by normal rate of dividend into paid up value per share. So 20 by 15 into 10, 13.33. This is the yield value per share. Next one, seventh problem. Ascertain the fair value of the share. Fair value is nothing but simply the average of intrinsic value and yield value. So take the intrinsic value plus yield value divided by 2. That you will give it, you will get fair value. So in the problem value of the on the basis of net assets, value on the basis of net assets, this is the intrinsic value, and um, value on the basis of yield, the so yield value. So we are given intrinsic value 125, yield value 140. Paid up value of share 100. We don't require paid up value. We don't require for the for calculating fair value. So intrinsic value 125, yield value 140. Divide by 2. You will get 132.5 is the fair value of share. That's all. So we have completed 7 short problems. Now I am coming to main problem. First main problem, the following is the balance sheet of Raju Company Limited. Raju Company Limited as on 31st December. So particulars, balance sheet is given, equity and liability, shareholders fund, share capital, 6 lakh reserves and surplus 60,000, long term borrowings, bank loan 40,000 and trade payable 20,000. Total of the liability is 7 lakh 20. Asset side, non-current assets, fixed assets, tangible 3 lakh 80,000, intangible asset, goodwill 60,000. Other non-current assets, that is preliminary expenses, should not be taken. Preliminary expenses is a fictitious asset. Don't take, ignore. Then current assets are inventories, trade receivable, cash and cash equivalent. Total the balance sheet, 7 lakh 20. Now notes, 5,000 equity share of 100 each fully paid, 5 lakh. 1,000, 8% preference share of 100 each, 1 lakh. So here we are having equity shares as well as preference shares. Now, uh, reserves and surplus consist of general reserve 40,000, profit and loss account 20,000. Tangible assets, land and building 2 lakh, machinery 1 lakh 50,000, furniture 30,000. This is a balance sheet given. Now the value of assets is assessed as follows. Now realizable values are given. If realizable values are given, then we should take the realizable value, we should not take the balance sheet value. Huh? If balance sheet, if the realizable value is not given, then we can take the balance sheet. Goodwill 70,000. This is the present value of goodwill. This will take. 
मशीनरी वन लैख सेवेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड लैंड एंड बिल्डिंग टू लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड स्टॉक एंड ट्रेड वन लैख थर्टी फर्नीचर टू बी डिप्रिशिएटेड बाई टेन परसेंट सो फ्रॉम द बुक वैल्यू वी डिडक्ट टेन परसेंट एंड डेटार्स आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू रियलाइज एटी परसेंट ऑफ बुक वैल्यू तो वट एवर डेटार्स आर गिवन इन द बैलेंस शीट ओनली एटी परसेंट विल टेक फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ ईच इक्विटी शेयर अगेन वी फाइंड आउट द इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू वेरी सिंपल राजू कंपनी कैलकुलेशन ऑफ इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू पर शेयर एसेट्स गुडविल सेवेंटी थाउजेंड इन एडजस्टमेंट इट इज गिवन प्रेजेंट एसेस्ट वैल्यू ऑफ गुडविल इज सेवेंटी Now machinery present value one lakh seventy six thousand land and building plus present value two lakh twenty five furniture it is given that ten percent depreciation should be provided on furniture the balance sheet value of furniture is thirty thousand minus ten percent depreciation you will get twenty seven thousand stock one lakh thirty thousand debtors is given in the problem as ninety percent is recoverable so ninety thousand is the total debtors. 80% is recoverable. So 80% of 90,000 72,000. Bank balance is 60,000. Take the total of the assets 7 lakh 60,000. From this we deduct to the outside liabilities. The outside liabilities are bank loan 40,000, creditors 20,000. Only two outside liability. Subtract. We get 7 lakh. From 7 lakh subtract the preference share capital. In the earlier problems, we have never came across regarding preferential capital. Now preferential capital is given. Deduct preferential capital. So six lakh rupees is the amount available for equity shareholders. Amount available for equity shareholders. Total number of equity shares five thousand given in the problem. Then intrinsic value per equity share amount available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. So six lakh divided by five thousand one twenty rupees. One twenty rupees is the intrinsic value per equity share. That's it. This is the end of first main problem. Now, second problem. The following is the summarized balance sheet of Shiva Kumar Limited at thirty first December. Again, balance sheet is given. Shareholders fund share capital thirty lakh reserves and surplus twenty five lakh. Long term borrowings. This is the outside liability. 10 lakh trade payable again it's an outside liability other current liability is outstanding expenses 1 lakh so outside liability are long term borrowing trade payable other current liabilities then asset side fixed assets tangible 40 lakh non current investments 10 lakh then current assets are inventories trade receivable cash and cash equivalent so 70 lakh is the total of the balance sheet now notes Share capital ten thousand nine percent preference share of hundred each ten lakh. So we have preference share capital of ten lakh, on which dividend at the rate of nine percent is payable. Now twenty thousand equity share of hundred each twenty lakh, total thirty. Reserves and surplus general reserve profit and loss account long term borrowing consists of eight percent debentures. For the purpose of valuation of share, fixed assets are to be depreciated by ten percent. Fixed assets are given forty lakh. From forty lakh, we deduct ten percent four lakh. So remaining thirty six lakh will take. Then investments are to be revalued at eleven lakh. This is the present realizable value of investment. Stock five lakh eighty thousand. Debtors will realize eleven lakh seventy five thousand. Interest on debenture is outstanding for six months, and preference dividend for two thousand four is to be paid. Calculate the value of each equity share. So here in this problem, interest on debenture for six months we have to provide. It is payable, whereas uh, preference dividend for one year is due. So we deduct preference share capital and arrears of preference dividend for one year. That is the new point. Remaining all the points are same. Now we'll start calculation of intrinsic value fixed assets. In the balance sheet, the fixed assets are forty lakh, and it is saying ten percent depreciate. So minus ten percent, thirty six lakh. Investment present value eleven lakh. Stock five lakh eighty. Debtors eleven seventy five. Bank balance two lakh. Total of the assets sixty six lakh fifty five thousand. Outside liability. The outside liability consists of eight percent debenture, ten lakh. Now it is given interest due on debenture for six months. So what is the rate of interest? Eight percent of ten lakh into six by twelve. For half year it is due. 
तो फोर्टी थाउजेंड इज द इंटरेस्ट ऑन डिमेंजर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग दैट इज ऑल्सो लाइब्रिटी देन क्रेडिटर्स फोर लैक लाइब्रिटी फॉर एक्सपेंसिस वन लैक तो टोटल ऑफ आउटसाइड लाइब्रिटी फिफ्टीन लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड डिडक्ट यू गेट फिफ्टी वन लैक फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड नाउ सब्ट्रैक्ट प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल इज टेन लैक एंड प्रेफरेंस डिविडेंड इज ड्यू इन अरियर फॉर वन इयर तो रेट ऑफ प्रेफरेंस डिविडेंड इज नाइन परसेंट तो नाइन परसेंट ऑफ टेन लैख कम्स टू नाइनटी थाउजेंड तो टेन लैख रुपीज प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल एंड नाइनटी थाउजेंड रुपीज डिविडेंड प्रेफरेंस डिविडेंड इन अरियर दैट इज ऑल्सो पेबल तो टेन लैख नाइनटी थाउजेंड सब्ट्रैक्ट टेन लैख नाइनटी थाउजेंड फोर्टी लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड इज द अमाउंट अवेलेबल फॉर इक्विटी शेयर प्लस Now simply we can calculate what is the intrinsic value per share. Amount available divided by number of equity shares. Amount available forty lakh twenty five thousand. Number of equity shares given in the problem twenty thousand. So ultimately intrinsic value is two not one point two five. That's it. This is the end of problem number two. Now third problem. See the problem number three. From the following information, find out the value of each equity share. Particulars: equity and liability, shareholders fund, share capital two lakh, reserves and surplus two lakh seventy thousand. Non-current liability: my long-term borrowings, unsecured loan eighty thousand, other current liability twenty thousand. So outside liabilities are two. That is unsecured loan and other current liability. Total five lakh seventy thousand. Assets: non-current assets, fixed assets, tangible. It is not given intangible asset goodwill one lakh ninety thousand, non-current investment three lakh, and short-term loans and advances thirty thousand, other current assets fifty thousand. Notes share capital twenty thousand equity share of ten each two lakh. Next line reserves and surplus reserves profit and loss account less miscellaneous expenditure two lakh seventy. For the purpose of valuation of shares. Goodwill should shall be taken at two years purchase of the average profit of the last five years. So we are required to calculate the value of goodwill. After calculating the value of goodwill, then we can calculate the value of share. So it is given average profit of the last five years are sixty thousand seventy forty fifty fifty. So take the average profit of all the five years, multiply the average profit with two years, we we'll get the goodwill. Once we get the goodwill, the remaining procedure is exactly same. So first, calculation of the value of goodwill. Average profit. Take all the profits divide by five. So average profit fifty four thousand, and it is given goodwill is two years purchase of average profit. So average profit into two. That is one lakh eight thousand is the calculated value of goodwill. Now we calculate intrinsic value. So here goodwill one lakh eight thousand. Investment three lakh, current assets fifty thousand, loans and advances thirty thousand. Total of the assets four lakh eighty eight thousand. Outside liabilities are unsecured loan and other current liability only two. So one lakh. Deduct three lakh eighty eight thousand. In this problem, we don't have any preference share capital. If there were any preference share capital, we would have deducted. Now it is not there. So preference share capital dash. Amount available for equity shareholders three lakh eighty-eight thousand. So intrinsic value per equity share amount available divided by number of equity shares three lakh eighty-eight thousand divided by twenty thousand nineteen point four zero is the intrinsic value per share. Ha! So in this problem, three main problems, two short problems I have completed. Inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. Then buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video.